In Vedic astrology, we look at a map of your karma. It's called a horoscope. And that shows the strengths, the weaknesses, the possibilities, uh, the lessons, most importantly, that you're here to learn in this lifetime. It's all based in karma. Karma, as you know, is action, reaction. You reap what you sow. What goes around comes around. Technically, in uh, the Vedic tradition, in Vedic understanding, uh, from the Vedas, the Sanskrit Vedas, we understand that there are three kinds of karma. Prarabdha, Sanchitta, and Kriyamana. So how does it all work? Because karma is a fascinating subject. Prarabdha karma is the karma you come in with from the past. You're a man, you're a woman, uh, you're in a bird body, you're in an antelope body, whatever it might be. Um, your DNA, the family you're born in, the circumstances you're born in, into, this is all prarabdha karma. Can it be changed? No. It can't be. Well, you might argue nowadays that, yeah, we can have a sex change. There is such a thing as transgender. Yeah, I know it's there. Um, not sure how that would work uh, in terms of undoing the karma from a physical point of view. But since I don't know, I won't comment on it. Anyway, it's what we come in with and what, what our predisposition is to disease and health and strength, physical agility, etc. Prarabdha karma. That's all evident in the birth chart. Then the second kind of karma is sanchitta karma. Sanchitta karma is, is what we're working with right now. It indicates our accumulated karma or our behaviors, our tendencies, our inclinations that we exhibit. Where are they? Of course, they're in the mind. Primarily, the subconscious mind, which is nine-tenths of the brain. And, first of all, they appear into the conscious mind as thoughts or ideas or urges or desires. Or sometimes uh, they don't appear in the subconscious mind, but yet we have uh, a compelling uh, force that makes us do stuff and we go... And then we say later, why did I do that? Why did I say that? I need to stop doing that. And sometimes the thing that we need to stop doing, we keep doing. So this is the Sanchita karma. It goes from the mind, generally to words, then to actions. The Sanchita karma is the karma that is most important from this point of view because it's the karma we can work with. It's the karma that we can change. And that's what we need to do. How do we change our karma? How do we change our inclinations, our desires, or our behavior? Well, in the, through a spiritual path like yoga, meditation, the chanting of mantra, these are processes that have been there since time immemorial, thousands of years, uh, that are designed to change the Sanchitta karma, to refine it, to purify it, to raise our consciousness and therefore raise our actions to a higher, more enlightened platform of behavior. Um, it can also uh, be done, we can purify this karma or uh, cleanse it, if you will, through psychotherapy and systems like this. So that's what we need to do. And that's primarily what I work with when I work with my clients is changing the sanchitta karma and improving the life. So all of it goes to the third uh, category of karma, which is Kriyamana. 
Kriya Mana means the future karma. We could look at the three kinds of karma as past, present, future, frankly, simply. So Kriya Mana is the future karma. For example, if you live a life, a life, your life, in a certain way, what will you be like at 40? There's an old saying um, that you can tell what kind of life a man is led by just looking at his face at 40. Uh, is he pleasant? Is he warm? Is he kind? Is he happy? Is he gentle? Is he angry? Is he sad? Is he depressed? Is he forlorn? Is he miserable? Uh, they say from 40. Well, it could be at any time, but yeah. So what, what will your life be like at 60? What will you be like as an old person? Will you be agile, full of vitality, able to move around? Yes, it slows you down, no question. Age. But will you be able to look after yourself and move around freely? Will you have all of your uh, intellect? Will you be sharp, just as sharp as you are now? Or will you have dementia? Which is becoming increasingly common, unfortunately. So this final result or the result at the end of the life is based on the Sanchitta karma, what we've been doing, thinking, saying and behaving like throughout our lives. That's the part we're free to change, this Sanchitta karma. Because once we get into old age, the habits, the behaviors, the tendencies are not that they can't be changed, they can be, but they're pretty much set. And you can see that. Old people get set in their ways, right? So we take it a step further, and the entire lifetime is takes you into your future life. What will your future life be? If you're going to remain here in the material world, it you're supposed to evolve. You're supposed to become better during your lifetime and in each successive lifetime. Your karma should become better, your opportunities better, uh, your, ha your happiness increased, your consciousness and your compassion, your understanding, your love increased. That's called evolution and consciousness. We're not talking about Darwinian evolution, whether you'll become a bird, although that's, that's also a possibility, <laughs> whether you'll adopt your feet for swimming, you know. Um, so ultimately what we're trying to do is get off the wheel of repeated birth and death, samsara, and return to the spiritual world. And the process of doing that is by the purification of consciousness and the raising of consciousness. And I wish you a healthy, happy, and vigorous old age and a much, much better life or no further material birth or lifetime again.